is 358 and 359. We have a story that goes along with our story, Jelly's The Life of Jellyfish, called Splash Photography. And let's talk a little bit about this story before we read through it. Now, this is also an informational story. So that means what for us? What, what does an informational story do? Or what kind of story is an informational story there? Nice and loud. Yeah, it's real. It gives us, it tells us what? Right, we're going to see real photographs. It tells us facts, okay? Facts and details. So it's true things. Excuse me. Yes. Um, Tim Hong came in late. Did he arrive? Nope. Okay, he should be there shortly. Okay, thanks. Thanks. Okay, so it tells us facts. It tells us real things about the story, okay? So, and it gives us photographs. Come on, hurry up. Let's go. Unpack your things. The office called down because you hadn't come into the room yet. It shouldn't take you that long. Let's go. We see real photographs about this thing, details. Now, in this case, too, we will have, sometimes with the photographs, we'll have captions, which are some words that go along with the pictures. We're also going to have a diagram in this story. We're also going to have some labels that go along with the pictures, too. Labels and captions are kind of the same when it comes to pictures. It's some words that describe what we see in our pictures, okay? This story, Splash Photography, talks about what um, photographers who take pictures underwater need to do and what they need to use to be able to go underwater. Because taking a picture underwater is a lot different than taking a picture out of the water, okay? So this one is about p photographers who actually take the pictures that we see of the jellyfish and the sharks and things like that. So it starts out by saying, smile. How could you take a picture of a fish swimming underwater? You would have to use special equipment or tools. People use underwater photography or taking pictures for different reasons. A scientist might want to learn more about sharks. Some people like it just because they think it is fun. You need to sanitize everything, your hands, your stuff. Let's go. Underwater dress. Now, here's a picture of a person who is a scuba diver that would be taking pictures underwater. Notice how they're dressed a little bit differently than we are, right? Yeah. To take pictures in deep water, a photographer uses a scuba tank or air tank to breathe. An underwater photographer also must take lessons to use a scuba tank. You'll notice on the back of that person, you'll see, it look, almost looks like a backpack. That's the scuba tank. That's a tank that's full of air so that that person can breathe. Make sure the lid gets closed on that so that they don't dry out. An underwater photographer also wears a mask and swim fins. It is a good idea to wear a rubber suit called a wetsuit. These suits help to keep a person warm and safe from stinging animals. Gee, I wonder what kind of animals could sting somebody underwater. Hmm. Jelly Jellyfish, fish, right? Jelly yeah. Fish. And there's other animals that might go under that might be underwater that could sting too. Yeah. Like um stingrays and some yeah. fish Jellyfish. might fish. Yeah. Sea anemones can also sting. So there are other animals that they might brush into that could sting them. Okay. So also it said that the suit keeps the person warm because in the water, when you're near the top of the water, the water is nice and warm. But think about it too, like if you've ever gone into a swimming pool and you go deeper and deeper and deeper in the swimming pool, the water gets colder and colder and colder. So it's the same in the ocean. As you go deeper into the ocean, or a lake, or a river or something, the water gets colder the deeper you go, okay? So that rubber suit can help keep somebody warm. All right, and then on the next page, it says using the right tools. An underwater photographer uses a special camera to take pictures. The camera is made to keep out water. There are other helpful tools too. Some tools can be used to light up a dark place. Other tools help to get a closer look at a fish swimming by. Now, this picture that's at the bottom of the page, Timothy, get your book out. We're looking at a story right now. You need to be on pages 360 and 361. 
So this picture at the bottom of the page, now you can see like the whole scuba diver in his suit with his tank on or her suit. I can't tell if it's a boy or a girl. Now notice that there are little small bubbles of words that are pointing to different parts of the picture. Those are what we call labels, okay? So it's kind of like captions where we have words that are telling us about the picture, but these are words that are telling us about a lot of different parts in the picture. So right here, this bubble is kind of pointing to the camera. It's talking about the camera. It's a special camera that's used underwater. So it's a special kind of camera that can go under the water and not get wet. Most things, if you put them underwater, 360. Most things, if you put them underwater, when they get wet, they would get damaged. Like if you took your camera phone underwater, it would get damaged. A re regular cameras underwater, they would get damaged, but you could use a special camera under the water to still be able to take pictures. Now you can get a better idea what a scuba tank looks like. It's like a tube, like a metal can that you would carry on your back. It's full of air. And so there's some rubber tubes that go out of the tank into the mask that's covering the scuba diver's face. And the air comes out into the mask so that the person who's swimming underwater can breathe because you really can't hold your breath for too, too long. You need to have air after a little while, right? And so if you wear this scuba diving tank with the mask, you can breathe almost normally under the water and not have to come back up for air every couple seconds, okay? Here's a label for the wetsuit. And you'll notice that the wetsuit covers the scuba diver from head to toe, covers their whole body. And it says this suit keeps the photographer safe and warm. And it's really, really, really thick rubber. Okay. And then they have swim fins on. Now, maybe you've worn swim fins in a swimming pool or something. Just for fun, swim fins can help you swim better. Because they act like the fins that a fish might have. And it says that the photographer wears fins to swim better. Okay. So these are different labels that go with the picture. We will see those sometimes in our informational type stories. So now, let's compare this story, Splash Photography. Do you have any questions before I ask, before we compare? Do you have any questions about this story, Splash Photography? Okay. Let's compare Splash Photography to our story, Jellies, the Life of Jellyfish. Let's do the easy part. Let's talk about how they are the same. Let's compare them and talk about how they are the same. How is this story, Splash Photography, like our story, Jellies, the Life of Jellyfish? Let's see if Valerie can tell me something. Valerie, how are they the same? What kind of stories are they? Yeah, they are both informational stories. They're both, they're the exact same kind of story. And that means what for us? If they're both informational stories, Derek, what does that mean for us? You answered this question just a little bit ago. Informational stories tell us what kind of things? Real stuff. Real stuff. Facts and information, right? Real stuff. All right. Now, oh, Jamie's not in here, but Zayden is. Zayden, can you tell me something else that makes these two stories the same? It makes it the same that they both, they both have real photos of, 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 like, kind of like. Of what they're talking about, right? They yeah. both use real photographs of what they're talking about. And in this case, they're kind of talking about almost the same thing. You're right. They have real photographs. In the, in the story so that we can see those real types of things. What's another way that these stories are the same, Timothy? Um, You've seen Jellies, the Life of Jellyfish. You can tell me another way that these two stories are the same. How is this story like our story, Jellies, the Life of Jellyfish? We talked about them using real photographs. We talked about how they're both informational stories, so they tell us real facts. Exactly. They both take place underwater, right? Jelly's The Life of Jellyfish talks about jellyfish being underwater. And Splash Photography talks about people who take pictures underwater. Logan, can you think of another way that they're the same? Um, what do we 
notices in the pictures this time on these kinds of stories. Like, especially if we look at this picture here, or if we look at a picture, let me see, like, let me see, like, this one, 330, no, let me do 342. Oh, hold on. Maybe it's not going to load for me. Well, I was trying to get it to load for me. Let's go to this one. All right. Okay, this is another, I could use this page as an example. This is 344. So in splash photography, like the page that you have open right there, looking at this picture here and looking at these pictures, what do you notice that go along with the pictures this time in our stories? Yeah, in this case they do, but I was talking more about how in these, in our story jellyfish, we have like captions that go along with the different pictures. And in the story splash photography, we have some labels that go along with the pictures. So this time in both of our informational stories, we have some words that describe the pictures a little bit better. Now, let me go back to my 358 here. Hopefully it will work for me. Oops, not if I don't put the right number in. 358. Let's talk about how splash photography is different than jellies, the life of jellyfish. How are these two stories different? Gwen, can you think of a way that they're different? Um, splash photography talks about how, how people use the photography and then the water and then the jellyfish, they talk about how Right, yeah, so they're two, two, two different topics. Even though they're both informational stories and they're the same because they talk about underwater things, the underwater things that they're talking about are two totally different things. This is about people who take pictures underwater, which I think would be a really cool job to have. And then the other one is obviously just about jellyfish. Angelina, can you think of another way that these two stories are different? <clears throat> Kaden, I'm going to give you one warning today. You want to make better choices. The splash photography story. Right, so this one actually talks more about stuff that you need to have to be able to do it, whereas kind of like what Gwen was saying, the other one's more just talking about jellyfish. So they do talk about, a little bit about different things. One thing that I want to point out that's a little bit different from the stories is even though there are words that go with the pictures in both stories, these words for the splash photography are labels. So it talks about a lot of parts of the picture. Whereas in our jellyfish, it's just naming the picture. It's naming what you're looking at. Now, here's one thing that we haven't talked about in a while yet with our informational text. But let's see if we can remember. What do we call these words that are at the top of our pages that kind of give us a little information about what that page is going to be about? Jose, do you remember what we call those words that are at, top, are at the head of our pages? Not labels. They're at the head of the pages. They're at the head of the page. Do you remember what we call those words that are at the head of the page? All right, phone a friend there, Jose. Pick somebody in there and have their hand raised because I think other people are getting my little clue. Headings, fantastic, Derek. Round of applause for Derek. Nice job, Derek. Good job. Yes, they're called headings, okay? These words, remember, at the top or the head of the page are words that are telling us what that page is going to be about. 
So this one is just talking about underwater dress, what you need to wear underwater. This one just says smile. It's just kind of a little introduction. And then on this last page, in this case, we have using the right tools. It's just talking about what tools you're going to need if you're going to be an underwater photographer. Our story, Jelly, The Life of Jellyfish, did not have headings in it um, because it just kind of told more of a story in a story kind of way, pretending you were a jellyfish. Okay, so they're a little bit different that way. All right, fantastic. Let's put that book away for now.